Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have an interesting topic to discuss. Elon Musk's astonishing mission to colonize Mars. Yes, you heard it right. Let's find out here how he'll do it. Musk claims mankind has to abandon Earth to ensure the survival of our species in the event of catastrophe or disaster. On Tuesday, December 10th, 2020, just 1.3 seconds before liftoff, two days after the Starship launch of SpaceX was canceled, the giant glowing steel rocket exploded upon landing, flipping and returning to its launch pad after reaching an altitude of 12.5 kilometers. Elon Musk had three chances of failure a week before test flight two. He tweeted in a bunch of enthusiasm, Mars, here we come. Yet, SpaceX already worked on two new designs until its largest prototype spacecraft failed. It's all about going quickly, learning from mistakes, and creating technology and engineering methods that haven't been developed yet, on the go, for Musk, who has uniquely revitalized spaceflight. With Starship, SpaceX knew that a lot of stuff might go wrong. The first two Starships blew up, after all. But that's the idea. Daily, SpaceX engineers struggle with the very difficult challenge of getting the world's largest spacecraft and rocket from Earth's gravity into orbit, while ensuring it can land and fly again. The only way this can be achieved for Musk is by trial and error, always getting closer and closer to the right design. That's what SpaceX did with its engine, Raptor. Like we're on the Raptor Engine 23 or something, maybe 24. It's almost anywhere lighter, checker, better than version 1 of the Raptor that essentially sucked and blew up. The company has attempted to launch the existing Starship project, which is 16 stories tall. Furthermore, it's not finished. Another 23-story booster rocket will be needed to lift its fuel into orbit before another rocket refuels it in the vacuum. The vision of Musk is to finally create one Starship per week. I think we need probably on the order of 1,000 ships, he says. But why he chose Mars? Musk believe it's due to the lack of a better choice. Venus has lead melting temperatures, crushing air pressure, acid rain, and hot winds. The Earth's moon doesn't have much, not to mention any atmosphere in the way of resources. The loss of the atmosphere will make life unbelievably warm or cold with a day equivalent to 29 Earth days. Similarly, during the day, Mercury is hot and unbelievably cold at night. With incredible amounts of pressure on their surface, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are just condensed balls of gas that can never be inhabitable. Jupiter and the moons of Saturn may be candidates, but they're colder than Mars and farther away. Even colder and farther away is Pluto. That makes Mars a dream candidate, almost. It's cold, though not too cold. Dark, but not much darker than the Earth. Not too far away, the day is nearly the same length as Earth Day, which is important for growing food. It has a third of the gravity of the Earth, a lot of frozen water, and a significant amount of carbon dioxide, which our planet's plants readily convert into oxygen, and which is essential for Mars to be terraformed. In essence, terraforming would try to make Mars permanently more Earth-like, possibly through global warming, until it could support plants that would do most of the job. But even that's getting ahead of Musk, who easily admits that it's so difficult to get to Mars that he just started with the biggest ones. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk submitted an updated version of Mars's colonization plans at the 68th International Astronautical Congress in Adelaide, Australia. The new model includes a slightly smaller rocket and spacecraft designed for a broader range of applications outside Mars, including moon base and Earth point-to-point -point transport. SpaceX would gradually eliminate its Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon vehicles, depending on its new Mars architecture for every mission. The plans of today are to extend the idea Musk proposed at the International Astronautical Congress in Guadalajara, Mexico last year. In 40 to 100 years, the presentation announced that a million people were being placed on Mars. The revised design does not vary significantly from SpaceX's original proposal, but provides insights into how the new rocket and spacecraft, which Musk projected would cost $10 billion to build, could be funded. The most important thing I want to convey in this presentation is that I think we've figured out how to pay for it, Musk said. An emerging notion. A massive rocket, called the BFR, is the codename for Musk's plan of colonizing Mars. A spaceship of up to 100 people blows into orbit before returning for an upright landing to the launch pad. The rocket then blasts off again, bearing for the transport ship a fresh load of petrol. Next, the settlers leave for Mars. During landing, trawling through Mars's atmosphere would shed 99% of the vehicle's energy, Musk said, before a final landing burn settles the vehicle on the Martian surface. 
It is now shorter, narrower, and fitted with fewer motors for the booster itself. Paying for that. Musk said SpaceX will try to minimize costs from reusability and combine all vehicles of the business into a single product line to make the rocket affordable. He said, We want to have one booster and ship that replaces Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon. If we can do that, all those resources can be applied to this system. Musk said the larger transport ship would enhance the company's main business offering, the launch of satellites. The work of an artist deploying a supersized version of the Hubble Space Telescope on Earth's orbit was exhibited in Mars's design, and the transport ship was also able to capture redundant satellites and other space debris for the Earth's return. Wrap up. So, it seems like Musk has already begun to strive for his dream project, and it's kind of amazing for everyone. Would you live on Mars? Write what you think down below in the comments.